O oh, to spring to life and move about the house, stepping in time to your own pace and frame of mind, to not be burdened by the world and its weight, to be free and wild and alone. No music playing but the stream of sounds clamoring, out of tune, off key. But I don't care. I'm the only one watching, and I will judge that all things are equal and beautiful, and I don't mind the racket, I just love to hear the sound. Wrap me up in a pretty dress, feed me gourmet at the restaurant on Grand, take me out, we'll stay and watch till curtain call, stepping on the shoulders of our slaves in three thousand dollar shoes. Chicago to London, and I can't stand the turbulence. It makes my heart beat fast. I feel out of control and scared, like a little girl all alone. And I don't want to think about the substructure. I don't want to think about who is beneath me while I am gliding through the air, tightrope walking on the power lines. Duet. Hot flood, pain pricks down. Rolling down on the surface against the friction of her dress. Floodlight, an open door, a severed mirror, catching moonlight, reflecting smiles and fading memories of love. We once were mistaken for brother and sister, and I was caught up on fire inside. The first time you said, I love you, but it isn't the fear of isolation and a desperate struggle to survive the nights which turned us in to one another's arms and kept the door between our houses unlocked past midnight. This is how we met in the cafeteria, and you couldn't take your eyes off me. Dessert was nice, crumb cake, and a spoon of vanilla ice cream. Walking with my arm wrapped around yours, and the space in my mind where the demons feed was snuffed out, frozen and packed on ice. And when you held me in your gaze and I felt desired, and I felt loved, and I felt this frame indestructible, and it was, indestructible and accursed and empty, like a mirror. It didn't turn out pretty, not a picture-perfect fairy tale, not the way we'd planned, but it was real. There were fights and fists and tears, and so much screaming, I thought my words would catch the house on fire. And now I wander empty hallways, sip my tea in silence, staring at the photograph of us, smiling, and I can't kill the pain. So instead, I will capture the beauty of it. Looking out from the kitchen window, down on the street where cops collect, mischievous, bad-tempered boys, gas perfume seasons my right wrist as I light the burner holding the long match down inside. And I walk to the grocery store, down the street, up the hill, buy a bag and a bundle, throw it over my shoulder and carry it home, to cook and clean and wash up and lay in bed alone, burning with desire. This is where we say goodbye, my love. Your heart has ceased to beat and breathe. The luxury we all so often take for granted has left you. Your eyes no longer glow with the brightness of your being. I want more than anything to sing to you and hold you up in my arms to dance, hand laid firmly up in le uh, the length of your spine, securing your head against my shoulder, stepping bending and swaying to the music our bodies together, you struggling as you always did just to keep the oxygen coming, no holding on, just being held, but I want to create this moment, something not the ordinary, something to push the constancy of time out of the way. Even memory decays now that you are dead, every beautiful moment we shared buries my heart with agony. 
Everything I see is death. How does one escape this headlong plunge? By turning the head away, looking elsewhere? If only things were so devoid of complexity, simplicity taps me on the shoulder, but I say no. You do not exist outside of art and mathematics. And there is no time to relapse into, for it follows, no dream, day or night, to slip away my mind, only the lurking shadows of dead people. They walk among the attic, where I hide my secrets in, folding in and out, between pages of my diary, like loose leaves in the wind in autumn with a cool breeze, Halloween in summer, with no lantern to frighten the dead. When the tide is high at night, sometimes, and sleep comes uneasily, waves wash, dragging me in. Feel the depths of my pain, and I won't keep warm and dry. Roll over me, ocean. And it's so fucking cold, and all my silent screaming goes unheard. But there is a voice in this madness, and I will find a way to make it sound. Stepping into the tangent line, and approaching the intersection where your world and my world connected. Past is gone now, theorizing a hopeless and inconvenient theater. Wine and the craft call to see me thrown down and devoured by the memories that three months past could turn this sorrow and this madness and wash the senses clean. Temporary and permanent relief, recalled into silence by the crossing lines of a misstepping and stumbling mistake. One too many nights passed, one too many. Void. While I don't remember holding your hand or wiping my tears in your shoulder, and while I don't even remember your thick breath rolling down my neck, I do remember the two of us standing outside the pharmacy in the cold dead of winter when you gave me a dollar and seven cents, and a kiss and said, Don't hold your breath. Love is like the water that will buy you. Love is like the water that will buy you. It goes right through and leaves you longing for more and hanging on to an empty container. You have pierced the deepest part and pinned me between your blade and the earth, dressed me in the blood of my beating heart. You have torn my love in two, but played the slow death, afraid to finish me. And in the sunlight I can almost see your face, but when I close my eyes, your gaze is blinding, every portion received in stasis and purified, sacred and sacrificed, wholly ordained to dismember me. Asleep I will lie, empty soul in an empty room, gazing out into the darkness consuming me, bleeding out the drowning of my death. I am crying tonight with the emptiness of knowing, no matter who might take my hand and try to pull me from this darkness, there is no safety net to catch me. I will fall until I hit the ground, and there I pick myself up. Pretend you didn't disappear, pretending you're right here, and I'm holding on to you as if to burst your skin, like a rubber balloon, held captive from the wind. My fingers dig into your flesh, and it makes you uncomfortable. You writhe. It feels like me on the inside, tapping away my hurt into your veins, and I want to feel the syrup of your blood trickling out. I need someone to understand me. Swearing at the remote, to separate myself from your reality, I threw myself in water-colored dreams, 
never-ending fantasies, where distance between us never changes, no time exists in the abstract and sublime. Too natured, too darkened, and too cold, the night remains my lover in your absence. Daybreak happened long ago, nothing can contain the fountain of words. Do you love me? Do you think often, roll over at midnight the way I do, in a sanctimonious cobweb of desire, fastened to? Change the channel, it's 2 a.m., time for another romance. Click. The world is a wasteland, and I its sole survivor, alone and abandoned and in ruins, breathing slow in the cellular, so they won't hear. When the sun shone, I would walk about the earth among my friends in the garden of easy delights, and make my voice heard, my tongue was loose, and not afraid to speak. Blow over me, and let this fear pass. Wash me clean in your deepest pains, your darkest howling of the wind. Scrub me with hard with a steel brush. Make me shine in tomorrow's bright sun. Dirty thoughts hanging on a black cloud, and the mind in utter ruin, yet hanging on in a desperate attempt to save my sanity. The cloud grows, breathing no longer comes easy, sun buried beneath a hazy sky, and in my fortune I hold on to something pure in this world, the burning flame causing my destruction. Stepping outside the container, marking the graves of the recently departed with a gesture of complete surrender to myself. The torchlights hold within them a shadow of my body's immersion in this silhouette of pain. No lover will hold me while the passion burns, yet one of them will extinguish my flame. Kindling from the tower up above the sun, where engines hum and lilacs bloom, the water's all dried up, and a thirsty daughter drinks in the moon. Besieged by every instance of your touch, holy in the recovery of an April fire, when it all burned down. So I'll keep crying and feeding you my tears, until I'm empty, or until you disappear completely. The sun is hot, burning out with the intensity of two lovers' last goodbye kiss, drinking the nectar of their desire, breathing in the foul air, gunfire and flame. We should be afraid to speak the thoughts that dwell inside, best to bury them beneath large clumps of rotted earth. Unremembered melodies turned ash by the pyre, and wetted with the tears of half-forgetfulness, deep secrets, dark secrets, feeding on flesh. Do not let them burn, lest we see a glimpse of what lingers in the depths of an imperfectly constructed heart. No, we must bury it, deconstruct desire. He is the giver of love and my desire, and although I wrestle in his arms, impassive to his wants, he will penetrate my heart and pour his fluid in me. And when he has gone and flown, I will call after him. I will sing until every drop of love has been spent, and the leaves fall to cover my descent. Verse 